Welcome to the seventh episode of Unveiling the Darkness. Pedro Rodriguez Filho, please help us grow by subscribing our channel Thread Tonic. Pedro Rodriguez Filho's life began amidst turmoil and tragedy in the town of Santa Rita do Sapucaí, Minas Gerais, Brazil. Born on June 17, 1954, to parents burdened by poverty and domestic strife, Philo's earliest memories were stained by the specter of violence. His father, a volatile and abusive alcoholic, subjected Philo's mother to regular beatings, leaving her physically and emotionally scarred. The trauma inflicted upon her during pregnancy may have contributed to Philo's cranial deformity, a visible reminder of the turmoil that engulfed his formative years. Growing up in such a tumultuous environment undoubtedly left an indelible mark on young Filho's psyche. The constant exposure to domestic violence and instability may have shaped his perception of the world, instilling in him a deep-seated resentment and a propensity for aggression. As he navigated the complexities of childhood, Filho found solace in the twisted recesses of his own mind, forging a bond with darkness that would come to define his existence. Philo's descent into depravity began at a shockingly young age. At just 13 years old, he committed his first murder, a chilling initiation into a life of crime that would consume him entirely. The victim of this heinous act was the vice mayor of Alfenas, Minas Gerais, a man who had incurred Philo's wrath by unjustly terminating his father's employment. In a fit of blind rage and misguided retribution, Filho extinguished the life of another human being, forever altering the course of his own destiny. The circumstances surrounding Filho's first murder are shrouded in darkness and uncertainty. What drove a young adolescent to commit such a brutal act of violence? Was it a desperate bid for revenge, a twisted sense of justice, or the culmination of years of pent-up anger and resentment? Whatever the underlying motivations, Filho's actions marked the beginning of a reign of terror that would grip Brazil with fear and fascination for decades to come. With his first taste of blood, Filho's thirst for violence was awakened, setting him on a path of destruction from which there would be no return. As he matured into adulthood, his homicidal urges intensified, fueling a relentless campaign of terror that would claim countless lives and leave a nation reeling in horror. Filho's victims were as diverse as they were numerous, spanning a broad spectrum of society. Drug dealers, rival gang members, and perceived enemies were among his primary targets, their deaths serving as macabre spectacles of retribution in Philo's twisted worldview. But his bloodlust knew no bounds, and innocent bystanders often found themselves caught in the crossfire of his indiscriminate violence. What drove Pedro Rodriguez Filho to commit such heinous acts of violence? What inner demons lurked beneath the surface of his seemingly ordinary exterior? To understand the mind of a killer, one must delve into the depths of Filio's psyche, unraveling the complex web of motivations and impulses that propelled him down a path of darkness. At the heart of Filio's twisted psyche lay a potent cocktail of rage, resentment, and a pathological need for control. His turbulent childhood, marked by abuse and instability, undoubtedly played a significant role in shaping his worldview and fueling his violent tendencies. But beyond the scars of his past, Filho was driven by a primal urge to exert dominance over others, to inflict pain and suffering as a means of asserting his own twisted sense of power. Despite his outward facade of bravado and confidence, Filho was plagued by deep-seated insecurities and a profound sense of inadequacy. His acts of violence served not only as a means of exacting revenge, but also as a desperate bid for validation, a perverse attempt to prove his worth in a world that had rejected him at every turn. Filio's reign of terror cast a long shadow over Brazilian society, leaving a trail of devastation and despair in its wake. The fear of encountering the notorious Killer Petey permeated every corner of the nation, instilling a sense of unease and mistrust among the populace. Parents warned their children to beware of strangers, and communities banded together in a desperate bid to protect themselves from the specter of violence that loomed on the horizon. But perhaps even more chilling than the fear he inspired was the morbid fascination that surrounded Philo's crimes. 
Media outlets vied for the latest scoop on Brazil's most notorious serial killer, sensationalizing his atrocities in a grotesque spectacle of voyeurism and exploitation. With each new revelation of death and depravity, the public clamored for more, drawn to the lurid allure of Filho's dark charisma. In the face of such widespread terror and fascination, law enforcement agencies struggled to contain the escalating crisis. Despite their best efforts, Filho remained one step ahead, eluding capture time and time again through a combination of cunning and sheer audacity. His ability to evade justice only served to embolden him further, fueling his insatiable appetite for destruction and death. For years, Pedro Rodriguez Filho operated with impunity, a shadowy figure lurking in the shadows, beyond the reach of law and order. But in 2003, his luck finally ran out when he was apprehended by authorities and brought to justice for his crimes. The details surrounding Filho's capture are shrouded in mystery, a testament to the cunning and resourcefulness that allowed him to evade capture for so long. With Filho behind bars, the wheels of justice began to turn, albeit slowly and painstakingly. Legal proceedings dragged on for years as prosecutors pieced together the mountain of evidence against him, determined to secure a conviction that would bring closure to the families of his victims and deliver a measure of justice to a nation scarred by his crimes. In 2007, after a lengthy trial, Filho was sentenced to multiple life terms in prison, effectively bringing an end to his reign of terror. But even behind bars, his legacy loomed large, a dark specter haunting the collective consciousness of Brazilian society. Though his physical freedom had been curtailed, Filho's influence continued to reverberate through the corridors of power, a chilling reminder of the fragility of human civilization in the face of unchecked violence. In the years following Filho's incarceration, Brazil struggled to come to terms with the legacy of its most notorious serial killer. His crimes had left an indelible mark on the nation, forever altering the fabric of society and reshaping its collective identity. But amidst the horror and despair, there were glimmers of hope signs of resilience and determination in the face of unimaginable adversity. As Brazil slowly began to heal from the wounds inflicted by Filho's rampage, the nation turned its attention to the future, seeking to build a society free from the specter of violence and fear. But the scars left by Filho's crimes would not fade easily, serving as a stark reminder of the fragility of human existence and the ever-present threat of darkness that lurks within us all. The story of Pedro Rodriguez Filho is a cautionary tale a stark reminder of the capacity for evil that resides within the human soul. His descent into darkness serves as a chilling reminder of the consequences of unchecked violence and the devastating impact it can have on individuals and society as a whole. But amidst the horror and despair, there are lessons to be learned, lessons about the importance of empathy, compassion, and understanding in the face of adversity. As we reflect on Filio's life and legacy, let us not succumb to despair, but instead strive to build a world where such atrocities are but distant memories, a world where justice triumphs over vengeance and the light of hope shines brightly in even the darkest of times. For only by confronting the darkness within ourselves can we hope to overcome it and emerge stronger, wiser, and more resilient than ever before.